All right. Next one. Uh, dear Bill, you ruined The Hobbit. Um, he said, I'm a big fan of the podcast and your comedy. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of looking up your comedy on YouTube and came across the clip where you took a shit on Lord of the Rings. You know what's funny? I don't even remember doing half of this shit. Uh, he said it was the scene where the Gandalf stumbles, summons Shadowfax, the Lord of all horses. Oh, Jesus. And you pointed out <laughs> how ridiculous that was. Oh, I remember that. I am the Lord of all horses. It's just so fucking over the top. He goes, I don't consider myself to be a big nerd, but I do love Star Wars, Lord of the Rings and all that nerd stuff. I like all of that shit. I watched The Hobbit for the first time yesterday, and every time they said something ridiculous, I pictured your ginger mug going, oh, Jesus. I was literally laughing every 30 seconds. Well, there you go, then. I turned Lord of the Rings into a comedy for you. Um, you know, I saw a clip of one of those things where the guy just looks like a, and he has elf ears. And he talks to the, to the, to the I'm assuming, a wizard. You know, why don't wizards ever get a haircut? You know, why don't they ever have a, sh take, you know, take a shave? Why don't, you know, why, why, why can't you be a clean-cut wizard? Are you so busy moving fucking mountains? You know, somebody get, you know, get them a little, one of those little t toiletry bags. The straight razor. Um, I was watching one of those things, and I don't remember where the fuck I was at. Was I on a plane or was I watching TV? It's all running together at this point. My age, the days fly by so quick, you can't even remember. Did I dream that or did my neighbor say it? I can't even fucking remember. But I was watching one of those elf movies and uh, the fucking lead dude with the Carl Malden nose and the Spock ears, he, he, found, he found a ring. Now, for some reason, I thought the ring, the Lord of the Rings, like if you had the rings, I thought the rings were like, you know, those magic rings that hacky magicians pull apart. I thought that they were that big. It looked like you found a wedding ring. I don't fucking know. Anyways, so he said he was laughing every 30 seconds. I, what am I? He said, I hope you're happy that my enjoyment of The Hobbit was a casualty on your war on nerds. I don't have a war on nerds. I just call them out on their shit. How arrogant is that? I just try to keep them honest. <laughs> I do think that they should teach nerds how to fight rather than trying to stop bullying because you're not going to end bullying. You know, it's like I started watching the uh, the ultimate fighter where they have these the women fighters now. And I'm telling when I watch. When I watch those women fight, I get like. Like psyched for. Them. Going like I hope some pervert tries to grab her ass. Like, I hope a rapist, like, I would never wish that on any of them, but for the love of God, the next time a rapist tries to rape a woman, a woman, a woman, like, if she has the fucking skills that the women on the, on the, uh, the ultimate fighter, I mean, it's just going to be, it's just going to be a great day for, for humanity. Um, you got to see that show, dude. These, these women, like, for the most part, they, they spar with men because I don't think there's enough women in the sport or whatever. So these guys are kind of half-assing it, and the women are going like, it's, it's, you know, it's okay to hit me in the face. <laughs> I'm just sitting there like watching the guy fighter still pulling his punches because it just goes against everything that you were taught and everything that is just right in the world. To ball your fist up and actually swing and, and punch a woman is just like, I just don't think Christmas would ever be the same after that. Like it just, it would just be something... You just you just would lose something. Um, but anyways, I mean, they they like I can tell you without a doubt, every woman on that show would beat the living shit out of me. I wouldn't have a prayer. There's nothing you can do once that, that mixed martial arts. You know, if a woman look, look a woman boxer, you have a chance. You can outweigh her and you can just fucking just shoot her legs and fucking put her on her back and just smother her with a pillow from the couch. Right? You got a shot. But that UFC shit, you take them to the ground and then what? Then they're going to fucking put you in an arm bar. They're going to choke you out. It's going to be over. So, of course, me being a guy, being a fucking pig, I, I of course, got to look at them in a sexual way. And I'm like going like, all right, how do you rock that girl's world? 
in the fucking bedroom. And I don't mean the girly ones. I mean the fucking ones that are like uh, the one who the one who's a champion, I don't, the, the, the heavyweight champion or whatever. Like, I don't, I don't know what her, what her name is. But that one, I was just sitting there going, all right, what would she like in bed? That's going to go. She is going to go one way or the other. She is either exactly what you think she is, you know, like the fucking Chicago Bears. They're exactly what we thought they were. We let him off the hook. She's either exactly what you think she's going to be, where she's going to be dominant and fucking holding you down, slash scaring the shit out of you, wondering if she's going to rip your dick off, or I, I would actually bet, I don't know, she went the other way that she would actually be submissive she'd be so sick of beating the shit out of guys down in the octagon that she would actually almost like one of those fucking uh wall street guys that's calling all the shots and then it just gets so fucking sick of dominating the the entire fucking planet that late at night goes to one of those s&m things and gets on a swing with one of those orange balls in his mouth <laughs> I don't fucking know. But that's the shit I think of when I watch that show. You should definitely watch The Ultimate Fighter. Uh, dude, they had this woman. She looked like a fucking librarian. Or, you know, this nerd. She lost. But I just thought it was fucking awesome just looking at her going like, look at that woman. Like, you would have no clue. You'd have no clue that, you know, if you talk some shit to her, that she would just start raining elbows down on you. I just think it's I think it's amazing. It's really fucking amazing. Anyways, let's let's get on with the. Uh, so I guess I ruined the podcast for this guy. I got to read the last paragraph here. He says, uh, "Also, it might it might be a good idea to watch the movie and record your reactions." Oh, dude, I can't sit through that shit. I can't, it's too fucking long. He goes, "There's a scene where a wizard called Radagast, Radagast the Brown, is being chased by wargs." Big wolves riding a sleigh pulled by bunny rabbits, dude. This movie, like, I would, not, I, I would think that more like uh, people who were into like hallucinogens would actually watch this movie because that actually sounds fucking pretty amazing. He says Gandalf goes, "You can't outrun these wargs. They are vermilion wargs." The other wizard actually responds, "There are." Oh, oh, these are, and then he says in parentheses, some corny fantasy place rabbits. I'd like to see them try. Oh, so he goes, you can't outrun the, the war, these wargs. They're vermilion wargs. And he said, well, these are Lilliputian rabbits. I'd like to see them try. That's actual fucking dialogue. He goes, and then they actually zoom in on his face with a look of pseudo, pseudo badass determination. You know what, dude? I think I'm going to watch that movie. I think I, I'll eat up like a fucking pot cookie. Maybe I'll watch it. I don't want to do that, though. I don't want to put that on YouTube. Me fucking high. Giggling like a fucking schoolgirl watching some wizard on a fucking rabbit. I don't want to do that. Publicly. I don't want to do that publicly. All right. Carrie Underwood. He said, she's a singer, right? He said, I recently listened to your podcast. Or is that one of those guys with a woman name? You know, like that Shamar guy, whatever the fuck his name is does the hair products and also acts in movies, doesn't he? I can't remember what his fucking name is. He goes, I recently listened to your podcast concerning the song Before He Cheats by Carrie Underwood. Very funny, by the way. Uh, you might be interested to know how she has a new song. She has a new song out that takes that theme to a completely new level. In the song Two Black Cadillacs, a woman discovers her husband is cheating on her. Apparently, the mistress didn't realize he was married because she and the wife collaborate on murdering the guy. Uh, not just destroying his truck and humiliating him in front of a new girl. They end the guy's life. Here are a few lines from the end of the song. All right. It says, yeah, they, they took turns laying a rose down through a handful of dirt deep into the ground. He's not the only one who had a secret to hide. So I'm thinking about writing my own country song. The title might be something like Cold Dinner Raw Knuckles. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's one of those double standards that it, you understand why it exists. 
you know, it's not like women go around killing guys all the fucking time. When it really comes to violence, guys do it more to women than the other way around. And uh, it's one of the things that makes it being a guy funny. Because if a woman actually, like, right to the point of, like, cutting, getting your dick cut off by a woman, like, it's just considered funny. Like, well, dude, if she cut your dick off, like, other guys just think it's hilarious. We're not going to wear pink, you know, for all the guys who got their dicks fucking sliced off and thrown in a garbage disposal. We're not. We're just going to laugh at you. Um, whatever. You know what I really hear? that I really don't hear that as an anti-man thing. I hear somebody who's struggling to find a follow-up hit and is going back to the well possibly one too many times. But then again, I listened to ACDC and they had like three or four themes that they have been doing for 40 years. And I think they sound better, better than ever. Right. They sing about their balls, the devil, women and electricity. And it's worked for them. So good for her. Good for her. Uh, Maybe next one will be like uh, the guy comes back like a zombie. And she has a relationship with a zombie and then he cheats on her. And then I don't know what she does. However, you kill a fucking zombie. I'd have to watch Lord of the Rings to figure that one out. Um, advice on having a baby. She had a baby, man. She had a baby. Advice on having a baby. Hey, Bill, I need some advice. You're talking to me? I, what the fuck? I'm nowhere near that. He said, my wife and I are both 27 years old. She is a graduate from college and working. I'm getting a master's degree and will not be done for another two and a half years. The issue is she is getting to the point where she wants to have a baby. Not now, but some, but sometime right after I graduate. I, on the other hand, am not wanting a baby anytime soon. But no, oh, but by the time I graduate, I will have been in college for nearly eight years. After I graduate, my wife and I will have a dual income of well over a hundred grand a year. I grew up in a family, in a fairly poor family. I worked hard to get my schooling, so I want to enjoy the rewards. I want a nice apartment, nice things and to travel the world. If we just start having kids, we won't be able to travel. And if we just have kids right after I graduate, I'll go from a life of stress from school to a life of stress from parenthood. But I understand my wife's concern. If we wait until we are 33 or 34 to start having kids, we could have some trouble conceiving. And if it takes us too long, she could give birth to a mentally challenged child, which does run in my family. Jesus Christ, dude, this is one of the more serious ones. I love my wife and plan on being with her the rest of my life. It's just a shame that my goals are to travel and have nice things, and her goals are to start a family. So what do you think, Bill? Any advice? Uh, That's some pretty heavy shit there. Um, Well, I don't understand why when you're you're, um, going to school right now that you guys can't save up a little bit of money and go to Aruba for a few days. You can do little mini ones. You know what I mean? I think there's a way to kind of do both. And um, I think if you express all your concerns to your wife and just say, look, I don't want to be that couple that just goes from school to having kids. And then once we have kids, all we do is just do the kid thing. Um, I don't know, dude. I don't know what to tell you here. Um, Fuck. I, I definitely understand. I mean, you went from a life of poverty to right to a life of school, and then you're going to go right to a life of being a parent. When do you actually get to sit back and enjoy a nice flat screen TV, watching some sports, or maybe go travel in Europe or something like that? Um, look, dude, you could do this. You could have a kid. I don't know how close you are with you know the parents on either side. Um, I think you can have your cake and eat it. Why don't you just have a fucking kid? And then also save up for a fucking epic 10-day trip somewhere through um, through Europe. And then just, just make a pact with your wife and just say, listen, once every two years or once every whatever, I want to, uh, I want to go on a trip. And we'll leave the kid behind or the kids behind. My parents did that. They went to Vegas and my grandparents came to time. It was great. We ended up developing a relationship with our grandparents. It was a good thing. And it was also good socially. It was good for us as kids to have a different sort of disciplinary dynamic. Jesus Christ. I remember I tested my grandmother too and she broke a fucking wooden spoon. Would have been over my head, but I got my arm up and I blocked it. I kept messing. I saw her 
the way we, we were renting this, we were, lived in a duplex when I was a kid for a certain uh, number of years. And um, the way we had it set up was uh, it went kitchen, living room, and then dining room. So you had to walk through the living room. We kind of altered the living room and kitchen a couple of times trying to figure out which was best. And uh, this was just a period where there was, uh, it went kitchen and then we had the living room and then we were using the other room as a dining room. So anyways, we, there was this old shitty rug and there was a hole in it. So my mother had put a throw rug over the hole on the floor. So I saw my grandmother walk by through the living room as she was setting the table and she saw the, uh, the throw rug was messed up. And she, I just heard her mumble to herself. She said, now, why does this keep getting messed up? So <laughs> she walked into the kitchen. That was literally my cue. She'd straighten it out, walked into the kitchen. So I said, all right, fuck. So I got off the couch and I messed it up and went over and I went back and I sat down. So then she comes walking out with the dishes or the food and she sees it again. She goes, now what just happened? It was, I just straightened this out. So she straightens it out, goes in the dining room, walks back into the kitchen. And then I got up and I messed it up again. She came third time, sees it again. And she doesn't fucking say anything, which should have been a warning to me. So she straightened it out and then she walked into the kitchen and turned the corner and I got back up again to go mess it up. And right as I'm grabbing it to mess it up, I hear I hear this stomp and she took a quick step back and looked back out and right in the middle of it, saw me messing it up. And she just had this wooden spoon in her hand and just came fucking flying at me. Like if it was an axe, I wouldn't be here. Right? If it was a hatchet, I would have been dead. She came in like Billy Bob when she fucking when he kills that country singer, right? Came flying at me. I just remember crouching down and putting my arm up, and it, it fucking snapped in half over my forearm. She had this look of anger on her face. Slammed it down, snapped it over my arm, and then she just, after it snapped, she just went, "Wow, well, that's the end of that spoon." And then she just walked back out into the kitchen, and uh, that was it. So I, I think that's a good thing if they stay. <laughs> If they stay with their grandparents, I think you can do both. I think as a couple, if you really sit down and you say what's important to you, um, you know, and this is very easy for me to say, not having a child and having it c completely consume your life. You know, who knows? Your priorities might change or whatever. But there's also something to say, too, that if you start early, I mean, if you start it now, you're 27, your kid would be 18 when you're 45, my age right now, and then you can travel um, you know, 45 kids out of college by the time you're 49, then you have your golden years, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, depending on how, if you eat right and you juice, you can live right up to fucking 90 and you can go see the goddamn world. But th there's no reason why you can't do that right now. Even though that you're in school, there's no reason why you can't go to Puerto Rico or go to Hawaii. There's some beautiful cities up in Canada, you know, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal is fucking tremendous. Um, there's all beautiful uh, cities here in the States. There's all kinds of things that you can do, and you can do them really cheaply when you don't have any kids. Dude, literally just backpack it. Just put a backpack on, stay in fucking hostels. Who gives a fuck? You know, just go. I would just say go and do it. I would just, yeah, do it now. Do it now. Uh, but I think that you can do both. And um, I also say everybody I know who's ever had a kid has never regretted it. Never, never, ever regretted it. So, um, you know, I, I, but I, I think it's also important that if you do something like that to, to, to not lose yourself in all of it. All right, there, I've said my piece. All right, alcohol problem. Hey, Bill, I love the podcast. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Anyways, I am 25-year-old male. And I'm starting to come to terms with the fact I have an alcohol problem. I drink six days a week and black out at least once a week. All right. Well, the only saving grace you have is you're 25. So you might just be a little immature. I don't know if you're an actual alcoholic, but let me read the rest of this. It says, I drink six days a week, black out at least once a week. The nights I get really drunk, I really regret doing it and regret my actions. Nothing serious, just phone or text conversations I have with people. I've considered going to AA, but never have gone through with it. Um, I finally quit smoking two months ago, and I'm worried if I try to quit drinking now, I will start going crazy. I know you have always mentioned you are stupid, but I honestly agree with most of the advice you give out. Well, thank you. He said, my question is, do you think I should try and quit cold turkey 
or are there any other options I can take? One of my concerns with quitting completely is that most of my friends drink and go out on weekends. Um, and I don't want to lis- risk losing all of my social life and seeing and uh, seeing me friends. You got all Irish there. And seeing me friends. Appreciate the advice. Um, all right, dude. All I can do is just tell you what has worked for me when I'm not drinking. And um, the first two, three days are brutal. Because all you've gone is two, three days, and there's definitely that feeling of, well, if I drink now, I can start over again. I'm just trying to make up three days. But if you can get through the first two, three days, once you get to the fourth day, it's like, all right, I got a nice little streak going here. Like, I'm up to six days right now. And um, one of the hardest things to do is when you go out socially with people. But I found that all you have to do, all I have to do, because I don't know how, dude, if you're a full-on alcoholic, and you have the disease, it might be harder for you, and you really should probably, I would say, talk to a recovered alcoholic. But if you're like me, all it takes is going out to the bar that first time when everybody's drinking, and you just order a, uh, I try to stay away from soda and club soda because then, I mean, that shit's not good for you either. And I usually just order the cranberry juice and deal with the departed. Well, what are you in your period jokes that everybody does? I usually just go, I don't even do cranberry and soda. I just do cranberry juice straight up with a lime, and I just sort of nurse that, and then um, I just kind of drink waters. And you're actually – it's you're fun. you just got to do that that one night, and then you've kind of set up a new social experience that you're comfortable with, and you can still go out. And um, I got to tell you, you, you get a distinct advantage when you're sober and everybody else is basically getting fucked up because they're kind of – First of all, it's, it's really entertaining to watch people just sort of roof, roofie themselves. And you get through watching their behavior, you get to see all the dumb things that you've done. Um, so you get to, um, without judging your friends, you just sort of get to be like, wow, I was doing that, I was doing that. And especially with alcohol, I always say judgment's the first thing to go. And um, I don't know, I think you also have a better chance of meeting um, – a really nice woman if you're the sober one because you're going to come off as responsible. And also, if your friends are also hitting on her and they're all sloppy drunk, you're going to look even better yourself. So I would, you know, if if you're not feeling AA, which I understand, if just try, uh, what it is, I, I don't know. I have to replace the activity. Like this week I decided, you know, that I was going to stop drinking. So then what I did was I dove into playing drums and I'm doing that, that Mike Johnston 10 days to faster hands workout. So I just sort of replace, you know, like at night, I just sort of like, okay, I'll go downstairs and I'll work on, I'll do the practice pad thing. And, uh, you know, I started working out. He just, he, you know what it is, dude? I f- you you got to replace the time that you're drinking and doing dumb shit with shit that's also fun, but you're sober doing it. Because for me, it's like if I just don't drink and I'm just sitting around doing nothing, that's going to make me want to drink because it's just like, well, I usually go out and drink and have fun right now. But if I'm actually doing something else, um, like went out and I saw a movie last night, you just you fill up the time. Dude, learn how to cook. There's all kinds of – you learn a fucking second language. There's all kinds of things, dude, that like, you know, basically you're in your 20s right now and, uh, you know, you're trying to appeal to the opposite sex here. So, you know, if you can add some shit to your game, you're going to move up in the draft. You're going to get a better woman here. If you're fucking bilingual, what woman doesn't like that? If you're sober and responsible, she's going to like that. Who knows? You learn to play a couple of songs on a flamenco guitar. You take her out on a fucking rowboat. You're in there. Bunch of great – nothing bad comes from becoming sober. Other than you, you are bored shitless, but you, you, your head gets smaller because you drop all that booze weight. I'm telling you, you, you won't regret it. You definitely won't regret it. Um, but like I said, if you got the disease and that thing, you might, you're going to need more professional help. And I would actually seek out a fellow alcoholic. Um, and then I would use AA and all of that shit. You, you know, I don't know. 
I'm just a control freak and I don't like people telling me what to do. So I would have to use it in a way that worked for me. You know, I'm not going to be standing down there smoking cigarettes, eating donuts, you know, talking to those people with their yellow fingers and shit. Like I, I couldn't do it that way. I got buddies of mine. They, they go every once in a while, they go to a meeting, you know, like the way I go to church every once in a while, <laughs> fucking once a year, they'll do it, but whatever works for you. But nothing bad ever comes from, uh, cleaning up your act. So, uh, I, I, I hope that helps you. All right. Okay. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. Um, all right. Response to last podcast or Yankee fans. Response to last podcast. Uh, this is in response to the item mentioned on your last podcast. The brother that had the 16 year old sister who was dating a 22 year old. Okay. All capital letters. This guy writes, the brother needs to stay out of it. All right, so for those of you who didn't uh, listen last week, there was a guy whose 16-year-old sister was dating this 22-year-old dude, and he was questioning, do I knock this guy the fuck out? Do I say something to my sister? Do I somehow get my parents to wake the fuck up? What do I do? All right, I gave my advice, and this guy is saying, this, he seems like he's speaking from experience or this woman, whoever wrote this. The brother needs to stay out of it. I met, oh, it's a lady. I met my now husband when I was 15 and he was 20. Well, you little fast tramp. You couldn't even drive a car. How did you even meet a 20-year-old? Huh? Were you standing on the street corner? I'm sure you're a nice person. Sorry. Um, you were 15 and he was 20. Did your plane crash and you were stuck on an island? And it was like that blue lagoon or some shit? He said, we started dating just after I turned 16. And we got married when I was 20 and he was 25. We have now been happily married almost 25 years. Oh, that's a nice story. It may not work out this way for this guy's sister, but it also might work out too and end up being a stronger relationship than any relationship this guy might have. It's none of the brother's business. Stay out of it. Okay. M Miss, I respect your point of view and what happened to you, all right? But let me ask you this. If you have a daughter and she turns 16 and some 22-year-old guy starts sniffing around the house, are you going to just sit there and be like, well, my husband was 20 and I was 15? You know, I got to be honest with you. The difference between 20 and 15, a 15-year-old is a fucking, I, I can't quite say a child, but there is, there's a massive age difference. Forget about the legality of it in most states other than Mississippi. Um, <laughs> sorry, fucking with you guys. Um, 22 to 16. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's in the middle of high school dating somebody who's graduated college. Ah, that, I don't know. I don't know about that, all right? I, look, can you at least understand why this guy is that upset? And have you ever watched To Catch a Predator? I mean, it's not like there's not like evidently a zillion fucking creeps out there. How many seasons of To Catch a Predator did they, did they do? I mean, you would think like the amount of people out there that are going online trying to meet underage women, you wouldn't think that, I mean, I would like to think that there's maybe 40 people doing that. <laughs> but there isn't. There's a bunch, hundreds of thousands of fucking creeps out there doing that shit. So this guy's supposed to stay out of it and roll the dice that maybe this guy is a good guy like your husband. Well, all I can say is I hope that you're right. You've had, fortunately, you've had more experience this, in this than I have because I would not want to have experience in any shape or, or form in this. And I don't think my family would um, stay out of it. There would be major fucking problems. There would be major fucking problems. There would be. It's like, dude, you're 22. What the fuck is wrong with you? How did you even meet my sister? You know? How are you, how are you meeting 16-year-olds, you fucking creep? 
Uh, you know what? Maybe I'm ignorant here. Why don't you write back again? I want to hear the story how you guys met. You know? Was he teaching you how to add and subtract? <laughs> Sorry. The jokes are just too easy. All right. Thanksgiving Day special. Billy Crocker. There's a new one. Betty Crocker, Billy Crocker. I like that. And I like to cook. Oh, that's a good one. Love your intensity when it comes to bringing something to the table on Thanksgiving. Absolutely no pun intended. It's, it's really a no-brainer. Get good at making something and get to a point where you're automatic. Oh, he's talking about, yeah, like I was talking about a few weeks ago when Thanksgiving comes around, you got to have that dish that you just fucking can make and you throw down and you take it to another level. All right? Everybody else should be doing the same thing and in the end, that's the Thanksgiving meal. Um, so this guy goes, yeah, you should, you should get a dish down to where you're automatic. How hard can it be? Uh, you'll, you'll never been... Ex- You'll never been, you've never been expected to step out of your skill set. If you're baking breads, no one will ever expect you to bring the cranberry sauce. Uh, what's your go-to this year? What's Nia's specialty? What's my go-to this year? How about the whole fucking meal? Dude, I'll tell you right now. You guys think I'm a fucking one-trick pony? I can make you a turkey dinner with stuffing, mashed potatoes. My gravy game is getting better. I got to work on my gravy game, and I know that's crucial. All right? But my fucking, uh, my mashed potatoes, not a fucking lump in them. All right? Enough butter to make you slide off the chair. Um, As they say in New Orleans, that's a bad New Orleans accent, I admit it. My stuffing, go fuck yourself. All right? Dude, you you don't understand the recipes that I have access to. All of my recipes start with melt a stick of butter and a third a cup of Crisco in a pan. <laughs> okay, so you know it's delicious. Um, yeah, my stuffing. Um, I don't know. My mashed potatoes are the shit, but Nia's African American, so she likes more sweet potatoes. So I don't. I don't think they uh, that side respects mashed potatoes the way they should. Okay, I feel like my potato. My my my. United Colors of Benetton, whatever the fuck it is, respect for for sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes. I think I'm a little more uh, mature than the lovely Nia. Um, What's Nia's specialty? Uh, Nia's, uh, she's just great at everything. She's one of those people that I'll be out in the kitchen like, there's nothing to eat. What the fuck? I'm starving. And she'll be like, what do you eat? There's nothing to eat. She comes out there and next thing you know, she's got a couple things under her arms. And I don't know. I'm eating spaghetti, or I don't know what the fuck I'm eating. She somehow just throws it all together or makes some ridiculous omelet. Um, she's actually a, a true cook. I'm a little more robotic. I'm, um, I think I'm going to become a, a, a great cook or, or a better cook the way I became a better comedian, where at first I was a joke writer and I was trapped in my act, and then I learned how to improv. And she's kind of just watching her. She kind of, as she cooks, she's tasting it and doing all that type of stuff, where I just... They said to leave it in 15 minutes. It's been 15 minutes, and I take it out. Um, um, pies. I kind of got the whole thing, dude, from start to finish. My uh, my appetizer game is terrible. In fact, I don't even know if I know how to make one. I have no idea. But, dude, I can make a pie from fucking scratch, okay? I can look at you and tell you what all your fucking problems are as I'm making the pie crust and not even look down once. I can just feel the texture. You know what I'm saying? That's how many fucking pies I've made. All right? And I'll take that pie someday, and I'll bring it to your fucking house. All right? And I'll take a whole hunk of it, just and I'll just shove it right down your throat, and there's nothing that you're going to be able to say other than thank you for that experience. All right? As I'm shaking up the can of whipped cream to give you a facial. <laughs> You know what's funny about this? My attitude, like, cooking is the same as, like, those dancers with their stupid fucking looks on their faces. Take that fucking look off of your goddamn face. Unless you just dunked on somebody. Unless you have a loaded fucking pistol pointed at my face. You take that fucking look off of your goddamn grill. As you're fucking moonwalking across the stage like I'm in awe of you. I'm not saying it's not a uh, not a great skill to have, but what you're doing versus the look, the look on your face is so far down the fucking street compared to what the fuck you're doing. 
What is that? All the way back to those Janet Jackson videos. I miss you much. Oh, I miss you much. And she'd have this fucking look in her face as she's putting her fingers in and she's hopping around. And it was amazing. Visually, it was amazing to look at. But why do you have that fucking look on your face? Why are you all dressed in these army uniforms like you're fighting in a war? All right? Get back to the way it was. All right, everybody. Five, six, seven, eight. Shanil. You know, I just realized that Shamil, Shamazel were Yiddish words. I never knew what it was. I thought it was Jewish guys that ran the beer company that they worked for. <laughs> and I know I'm not pronouncing them correct. A Shamil is the kind of guy who, I guess, spills a drink. And a Shamazel. I can't say it unless I sing the song. Shamil, Shamazel. A Shamazel, Shamazel is the guy he spills it on. How funny is that? Did I ever tell you guys how much I love Yiddish words? I actually just looked up a bunch because I wanted to learn some more because they're fucking hilarious and they're fun to say. And uh, I really like Jewish humor. But uh, I actually looked up and it was like I knew, I already knew 90% of them. There were so many that I was using and I didn't even realize. Did I already talk about this or did I start to talk about I don't give a fuck. The holiday week. You guys got a short week. How psyched are you? How fucking great is this? is the work week that we were supposed to have. Remember uh, remember the Jetsons? And you'd be, oh, God, these three-day work weeks are murder. All right, the Yiddish Handbook, 40 Words You Should Know. Um, all right, there's so many that I use. Shutzpah, nerve, extreme arrogance. Oh, I've been using that wrong. I thought that meant you had, like, oh, chutzpah is to get up and go. Shutzpah is, oh, that's funny, like, shut the fuck up. I don't need your arrogance. A glitch is a Yiddish word. Kibitz, a klutz, kosher, obviously. Um, nosh is to nibble. Schlep. I never knew. Sh there is. Shlemiel is a clumsy, inept person, sil sil similar to a klutz, the kind of person who always spills his soup, his soup. I know I'm butchering these. Sorry, Jewish people. A sh shlemazel is someone who, with constant bad luck. When the shlemiel spills his soup, he probably spills it on the sh shlemazel. <laughs> That's fucking... I'm sorry. I know I fucking... Schmaltzy, schmooze, schmuck. We all use these words. Shtick. I had no idea. I had no fucking idea that these were all these these were all Yiddish words. You know what's a fucking great Yiddish word too? For your dick. Schmeckle. Isn't that fucking perfect? It just sounds like what it is. You can just hear the trouble you're gonna get into with it. Ah, what happened? Ah, my fucking schmeckle. Did it again. God damn it. Um all right. Here we go. Let's let's move on here. Oh, you know what? I, I gotta do some more advertising so I don't read these too late in the podcast so they don't fucking bitch, moan, and complain. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's only one more for this week. Look at this. Short week. Short list of uh, advertisers. All right, e-voice, everybody. The uh, the holidays are coming. The holiday season, scooby dooby doo And business, and as a business owner, you know what that means. Crickets. All right? Who's coming into your business as they're hanging up all the holiday cheer? Face it. The next couple of months are the calm before the storm. Now's the time to do something that will dramatically, dramatically help your 2014. E-voice. Jesus, what did I eat? I can't even get this out. E-voice is a simple technology that helps you make more money. You hear that, people? It's a simple technology that's going to make you more money. If you're not paying attention now, you, my friend, are a jerk-off. With e-voice, toll-free or local numbers, call routing tools, and a professional dial-by-name directory, your business will look like a million bucks. And with e-voice, if, can, if you can't take a call, they will transcribe the voicemail and email it directly to you. You'll never be caught off guard again. e-voice has been saving companies thousands of dollars every month, making them more efficient and more productive. There is no quicker or easy way to transform your business for 2014. And with e-voice, you can try it before you buy it. What more do they have to do? Right now, you can get a free 30-day trial to eVoice when you go to eVoice.com slash Bill Burr or go to BillBurr.com and click on the eVoice banner. 
That's evoice.com slash Bill Burr or BillBurr.com and click on the evoice banner. There you go. Now's the time to take charge of your business and prepare for a productive 2014. All right. I gave you the links, evoice.com slash Bill Burr or BillBurr.com and click on the evoice banner for your free 30-day trial. There you go. That's the deal. That's the advertising for this week. And now we're back to the back to the letters. Um, holiday friend, Billy O. Uh, I've been seeing this girl for about a month and a half. Handful of dinners and some sex. Very nice. You like to eat. You like to fuck. Who doesn't like doing that? This guy's over here like, eh, what do you want from me? She's super cool, but I'm emotionally unavailable. Oh, you son of a... You had a bad father? Bad parents? What happened? Huh? You get thrown in a burlap sack and beaten with a reed like fucking uh, Dr. Evil? What happened to you? Um, he said, I got too much stuff going on with work to be thinking about a relationship. However, I'm enjoying this casual situation. She seems to be happy as well. Oh, Jesus, dude. You're going to break her heart, man. Women don't look at this, sh this shit the way we do. She seems happy as well because she's probably thinking it's going somewhere is what I'm guessing. Uh, and then one day you'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm not feeling it. And then she's going to start crying. And you'll be like, what the fuck? I thought we were just fucking. And then she'll be like, that's all you thought this was? That's all I was to you this whole time? We went out. We got ice cream. You know, it's like. Just picture Seinfeld crying. That's what you're going to hear. Why would you do that? Um, <laughs> however, I'm enjoying the casual situation. She seems to be happy as well. So what do, I, what do I get her for Christmas that doesn't make it look like I've made room for her toothbrush? Dude, you shouldn't get her anything for Christmas. Don't get her a fucking thing for Christmas. Don't fuck her until after Christmas. Why are you filling up her heart with hope? Don't do this. I've done this. You're going to hurt her. He goes, I was thinking about some small things, a book, and maybe a sweatshirt from this place on the beach that she likes. Oh, well, isn't that thoughtful? Dude, get her a pack of Fig Newtons. Like, share her a package of those. Let her know where you stand. He said, P.S., the last gift I bought a girl was a few years back. We've been dating for three years and she cheated on me. Oh, we had been dating for three years, and she cheated on me. I found out over Thanksgiving, and when it came time to give Christmas presents, I handed her a frame with a poem. The first part of the poem was super sweet. She was getting emotional. Then she got to the last line, which read, After these words, your heart should feel heated, but instead, I'm going to peace because, bitch, you cheated. Holy shit. Wait a minute. Is that a true story? I don't even care if you made it up. You have to write back. I want to hear what happened. What the fuck did she say? Jesus Christ, dude. That's like... I'd expect like a... That's like... That's really deep, man. That's really clever. That's really intelligent. That's the kind of thing a woman would do. You know, we're usually just knees and elbows. So like, what? You suck a dick. You know, just start screaming at him. Thing you know you're in a full Nelson by some other fucking jerk off dragging you away and you're in the right. That's really uh that's really amazing. Um I would I would say I would say this. Uh I, oh wait, this is my podcast person texting me right now, trying to call me right now. He's getting on a plane, so th that's why this podcast is late. All right. And also I had to do this radio talk. Go oh, fuck yourselves, all right. It's the holiday week. I'm sitting here in my slippers. What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are you're, you're really going to hurt this woman. Because I feel like you haven't had a conversation with her. You said, you said, however, I'm enjoying this casual situation. And you said she seems to be happy as well. So that indicates to me that you guys haven't talked, sat down and talked this out. And I can guarantee you if this woman is anything like the women that I've dated, it's already too late. All right. Um, she might be happy thinking like, oh, wow, he's taking it slow. He's really getting to know me. You know, he got me a sweatshirt from this place on the beach that I like. He's paying attention to me. He, he is noticing things about me. You know what it is, dude? You are actually, you're actually a relationship guy. 
but this other woman ruined you, and you got to get that hate out of your heart or the defensiveness out of your heart before you should be messing around with somebody like that. Like right now, what you should be doing is just going out and just, I don't know, working on yourself while fucking everything that moves, or or maybe not. You shouldn't be going, like, don't hurt this. Like, I don't know what's going on because this is still very v- vague, but don't hurt this woman because that last one hurt you. I've made that mistake. It's a bad, it's bad, dude. And, I, and I, I'm not judging you for being in that situation because you're a guy and you shouldn't understand them. But now that I understand them a little bit more, uh, you know, I'm, I'm t- you're headed for a fucking, if I had to guess, you're headed for a, a rough Christmas. Or shortly after Christmas, you know, when she goes, you want to meet my parents and I can wear the sweatshirt that you got me from the place on the beach that you like, you know, and she'll bring that up right after she just blew you and your Saturn. And you'd be like, yeah, you know, I was going to watch the Holiday Bowl instead with some buddies of mine. I'm going to watch the Outback State House, Steakhouse fucking bowl. And then she'd be like, well, wait a minute, like, why? Well, I, I don't understand. And then you'd be like, and then you're going to be starting to sense like, well, well, what do you mean you don't understand? I just invited you to meet my parents and you, you like, you don't want to meet them. And these, these, I mean, I'm, a little, I'm a little offended. I mean, these, these are, these are my parents. Ah, 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 sounds good. Ah, ah, ah. Jaw starts hanging down. You can't even understand what she's saying. Ah, I said, ah, 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 ah. And you're like, and then she starts crying, and then if you're like most guys, you get mad because you're uncomfortable. Oh, are you going to fucking cry now? I can't believe that I would be crying and you would say something. Who are you? Who are you? Okay, let me out of the car. Let me out of the car. And she fucking rolls into a snowdrift. I'm telling you, dude, you, you don't, you don't want to go down this road. I, I got a bad feeling. I got a bad feeling about this one, man. Um, just make sure that she's enjoying this the same way you are. Dude, who wouldn't like to be with the super cool girl that you don't have to fucking be emotionally involved with who's coming over and banging you? And let me tell you something, dude. This is not 100% on you, so don't feel guilty because she also hasn't sat down and had the conversation. Maybe she has her baggage. Maybe she sat down and said that to some other guy and it scared her away. And she said, okay, not to stop. Did I bring out a fair is this guy? Yeah, sit down and suck his dick and... Hope that he loves you too. Um, coffee shop girl. Dear illiterate cunt. <laughs> I'm not illiterate. I'm just not good at reading out loud. It doesn't make me illiterate. I can still read the words. Ugh, did that, didn't that just sound like somebody illiterate? I'm smart. Fredo. All right, I'm a young guy. Oh, my God. Some 21-year-old kid just called me a, an illiterate cunt. And you know what? I got to take that on the chin. I got to sit here at my locker at the end of the reading game. I take full responsibility for that loss. I uh, got no one to blame but myself. I'm a young guy, 21, and I have kind of and I kind of have a thing for a chick who works at my local coffee shop. Please tell me she's not 16. I don't want to read another one of these. Uh, the idea of chatting her up while she's working always seems weird to me, mainly because I know she has to listen. Just give me some quick tips so I don't come off as a weirdo. Love the podcast and thanks. Dude, are you fucking kidding me? This is the perfect situation. All right? Oh, she works at the local coffee shop. Oh, oh, I thought you worked with her. Fuck. That's the perfect, that's the perfect situation. If you work with somebody that you're into, as far as, you know, being able to talk to them, it's not weird at all. And uh, you can make them laugh and that type of thing. Then they get into you. But then the bad thing is, is then you start fucking somebody you're working with. And you got a pretty good chance that you're not going to make the playoffs with that one, you know. And you're going to have to rebuild. And it's going to be ugly. And you're going to lose your fan base. And the fan base will be the other chicks at work that you probably should have been fucking instead of that whore. But anyways. All right. So you're walking into this coffee shop. And there's a girl there working there that you like. And you don't want to start because it's going to seem weird. All right. Well, what's weird about that is to try to do it in line is you're really dealing with a uh, a short period. It's like a vine. You're going to try to hit on her in the span that it takes to, sh- to watch a vine. You like that? You like that reference? 
trying to be hip to the dubstep fucking generation. Is dubstep already over? Have you moved on to something else? Um, <laughs> that fucking look on your goddamn face. All right, I could break you in half like a pencil. Will you stop looking at me like you can kick the shit out of me while you're dancing? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's it's just the funny, something, something funny about it. Attitude dancing. Um, can you guys send me some clips to some of the funniest attitude dancing you can find, or maybe put some together? Right there, you go. You know what I love is when you guys take clips from my podcast and then you play the audio underneath. Like some of the the uh, the animation that people have done is it's fucking so creative. Like that one when that guy did the one for when I sang that song. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? That's where my baby goes. And the guy did the whole animation of it. And I was talking about somebody throwing up. And when the word throw up came in, it it looked like it was launched out of somebody's mouth, like it arced its way in. Really creative. So how about uh? As I'm talking about these people dancing, just have just put. The, come on, you guys, you, all you fucking youngsters, you know how to use computers. Just put the audio underneath and just have that kind of dancing over the top, like that's the video. I don't know how to say it technically. Anyways, so let's get back to this thing. See, so all right, first thing you got to do is uh, I would you got to drink your coffee there. Does she come around? This is so hard. How do I give you advice? All I can give you, I can't tell you what to say because I never know what to say until I'm there in the moment and something pops in. Unless she's really good looking and then I, at that age I would just get fucking intimidated and be like, eh, I'm just going to sit here and eat, eat my bran muffin. Um, ah, what would you do? I don't know. Do you got something coming up that you can invite her to? This is what I would do. I would come there frequently enough that she starts to recognize you. All right, and then ease your way into kind of knowing her, I guess I would do that. And then you have something, if you got a fucking, whatever you kids do nowadays, you know, if there's a big ecstasy shipment coming to town and you're going to meet the truck there with your glow sticks and you got an extra pair of glow sticks that you could hand to her, uh, maybe you could do that. Something where I'm, I'm just flailing here. Dude, don't fucking ask me. Coffee shop, I, did I, I never picked up any girl that worked at a fucking coffee shop. I was good on the subway in New York, but that was because there would always be some weirdo doing something weird, and then you could just lock in with the other person, you know, like, look at this fucking maniac, and then you could make some, say something funny about that, you'd make them laugh, and then you were in. That, the gym, coffee shops, that's out of my wheelhouse. So I would just say, go there enough where she starts to recognize you, try to extend the conversation each time you order. And then blah, blah, blah. But but the thing is, you can't keep coming in there because you're really going to look like a creep. So I would say within three visits, give yourself three visits. On the third visit, you just got to fucking ask her. You know, if she's seen anybody and have something to invite her to that's going to be a fun thing. Don't just be like, I just want to take you out sometime and maybe I could pull it out and you could just look at it. You don't have to touch it. Don't do it like that. Have something to, to an event. Ladies like the events, and I don't know what they're into at your age, but um, I don't know. The first time is too weird. You got to have unreal game that I don't have, so I can't fucking give you advice. Second time, she's getting to know you, and then third time, you go for it, right? Swing for the fucking fence. Just say, look, cutie pie, I don't work here, all right? So I know this is... What am I supposed to do? I'm attracted to you, all right? For fuck's sakes, put down the goddamn coffee and, and come to me to, to, the, to the Burning Man thing. I got plenty of sunscreen and ecstasy. And, uh, you know, and it's not a sex thing. I mean, I would hope it would eventually turn into it, but more in like a lovingly thing, like the kind of thing where I wouldn't tell my friends what we did because I care for you kind of thing, you know? Maybe we lay in the dirt and roll around next to that thing that's on fire, right? I have no coffee shop game. Hey, anybody out there have coffee shop game? I don't drink coffee. That's the thing. All right? It's fucking gross. It tastes like dirty water, and it burns my mouth, so I don't fuck with it. And that just takes all that coffee shop pussy right out the fucking window. They always just seem like the, 
coffee shop people to me always seem like hipsters, like they just were over everything. You know? So if you're over everything, you're over everything. The fucking Grand Canyon. You're over that. My dumb ass is coming in there. What the f- you're not going to be over that lack of pigment? Uh, all right, the mall. Billy Holiday. Very nice. I am going on holiday. I'm going to Italy. I'm going to miss Thanksgiving. Um, what's your plan of attack when you enter a mall? Are you on a mission or are you a window shopper? Do you have a favorite gift? you've ever been given and what's your go-to mall food panda express taco bell sparrow pizza sparrow pizza sucks it always looks good i tell you but it really fills you up i usually go with the chicken parmesan and that that one a little sketty then i get on the plane and i start farting into that fucking flotation device beneath me or perhaps a fancy sandwich from au bon paul they don't there's nothing fancy about that other than the fucking name um, Aubon Pan. If you're still living in the 90s, oh, he's making fun of the place. Thanks, and gobble, gobble, go fuck yourself. All right. My plan of attack when I enter a mall, I only go to a mall when I need something. That's it. And I know what I want, and I know where it is, and I go in there, and when it's not there, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And then I leave. Um, I do not window shop at malls. I hate malls. It's just all those fucking people, and it it just makes me, they're just depressing. When I was younger, it was great. You walked around, there was all these fucking, that was like what you did. You go to the mall, and then you ran into girls that you were in your grade, and they'd be like, hi, Bill, and I'd be like, hi, how are you? And then I'd walk away, my face all red. (laughs) And then I was like, well, why didn't I say something? I hate myself. And then, I went, when, then where would I sit down and eat? Um, I don't like Panda Express. Uh, Taco Bell, no. Fast food, Mexican food. Why don't you just play Russian roulette? That's, Taco Bell is Russian roulette for your ass. Um, Sparrow Pizza, same fucking thing. Where would, I, where would I go? Well, if I had to choose small I'd go to I'd go to Sparrow. Um, it's usually some barbecue thing. I don't know. You know what I hate is when they have they'd have that little sweet and sour chicken on the toothpicks, and then that overly smiling Asian woman would, would come over and ask you if you wanted one. And, and it's just like, didn't you like poison the toys? I don't want to eat that, right? How Archie Bunker was that? I just don't like. It just fucking creeps me out that you're walking around with food. Like where where was that? Where did you get that? You know, you're on this side of the counter. Like on that side, I already know there's enough health code violations at Sparrow Pizza, Taco Bell, and Panda Express. Enough rat turds in that shit that, you know, I should run out of here right now. But now you're on this side where people are sneezing. You're on this side of the sneeze glass, walking around with that shit. You don't even have it covered. Stuck with a little fucking toothpick. And then you got that other thing over there where people stick their used toothpicks. Will you get that fucking glazed chicken out of my face there, Smiley? Beat it. Um. Yeah, I'm too old to eat at those places. When I was younger, I ate at Mickey D's. I ate at McDonald's. I was a McDonald's guy. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, cold. I could never eat it hot. That grease, when it's hot, makes me sick to my stomach. When it's cold, it's fucking ecstasy. And I would melt into the rug, into the rug, like I was on in train spotting. Um, I'd like friendlies. Back in the day, get myself a nice burger melt and a fucking Jim Dandy. Nice 3,000 calories to the fucking hot. And then I'd walk out of there and go play Frisbee football. Because that's what you did back then. With my fucking white socks yanked up to under, underneath my patella. Um, Ken Patella. All right. That's the podcast for this week, people. I don't know what to tell you. 